Welcome back to John's Films. DaVinci Resolve benchmarks are the number one topic across my channel, both in the comments and in the metrics for videos watched. Today I'm looking at an industry standard benchmark just released by Puget Systems. They allow us to run their DaVinci Resolve Studio benchmark across our hardware so that we can compare it to the benchmarks that they show on their site. Warning, their hardware is extremely expensive only because of the system configurations they built. Four-way Titan RTX systems? Hmm, not likely for me. This isn't a sponsored spot, but of course if they wanted to send me one of those four-way systems, totally down for it. Let's check out the performance of the systems I have here in the shack, and let's compare them to the Puget Systems benchmark, and see how we might be able to improve on it going forward. Let's look at where to get the benchmark. You get it directly from Puget Systems. The link is below. You can click this blue banner and it will download for you a zip file. That zip file gets extracted into your system. You'll notice these are my benchmark results for my runs. And you run the benchmark by double clicking the EXE that they package. Once you have this launched, click this link and it will run DaVinci Resolve's benchmark. Note, make sure DaVinci Resolve is closed. After it runs, and it can take a while, which you need to make sure you have ample hard disk space available because it will render out a large amount of files. You can see here I have 83 gigabytes in my 4K execution folder and 108 now in my 8K. That is in these render folders, which you can shift delete after you've run it because those are the files it generates during run. In fact, I would highly recommend you come in and do that, which permanently removes it from your system. Otherwise, you're just going to be eating up some hard disk space for no great reason. There we go. All right. Once you get your results, you're able to open them up. And notice I've got them labeled here. I relabeled these. Um, 4K, this is there with the game driver. I ran 4K with the studio driver. Let's take a look at, say, the game driver 4K results. The results file is broken down first by the system specs, so you have a reference of exactly what you were running against, and then separated into an overall score for the entirety of the work, then category averages based on the type of grade being done, and finally category averages for the codex. The general idea of this breakdown, first they run five different tests across five different codecs. For a total of 25 tests. The five basic tests that they run are a basic grade, that's standard color grading with four power windows. They add OpenFX, Lens Flare, Tilt Shift Blur, and Sharpen to the, to the prior grade. And then they put in Temporal Noise Reduction, the better setting with two frames shifting. Finally, they come back for the pain with a three times Temporal Noise Reduction, better two frames. And then they generate optimized media, which is zero grade. It is what happens when you generate optimized media on your timeline. They do that, as I said, across five different codecs so that we can see an average score across them. For most users on YouTube, we're using an H.264 codec. This is what we shoot in in our standard cameras and is what we end up grading and working with as we publish to YouTube. So this would be the most important metric for you. If you do shoot in ProRes or in, hey, 4K Red, why not? Here's your scores. The coolest thing that we can see about this is they break down each of these subcomponents for us so we can understand exactly what areas are getting hit on any system that this runs on. Now that we understand a little bit about the breakdown of the results, let's go see what the results tell us. We're testing on two platforms today. One, my thread smoker machine with the Ryzen 1950X first generation Threadripper chip. It has a 2080 Ti, 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and three NVMe drives. The mini machine is our second system. It's a Ryzen 2700X with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070. It has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and an SSD drive. We'll be testing both NVIDIA's gaming and studio drivers on this machine. This chart shows the scores from the 4K and 8K test running left to right. The tall columns are the score, and the bottom below are frame rates as they run through each of the different items. You can see there's not much of a measurable difference between studio and gaming drivers, studio being the orange drivers. You can see in the numbers on the right, you've got even exact same scores when it comes to 8K, and this is scaling that you see kind of drop off in the lower hardware 
it struggles equally across the driver bases in 8K. The Thread Smoker machine sees a minor uptick in 8K, but nothing immense, about a 1.5%, which I'd put inside the margin of error. When you look at the 4K score, I think we see enough of a pull away to be able to declare victory for the studio driver. You'll notice that the wins really come in across the board, each of the 4K tests seeing an increase. And when you compare Threadsmoker to Mini-Me, the hardware that's in Threadsmoker gets 186% increase in both 4K and 8K tests against the Mini-Me machine. Being two years old, you'll notice the thread smoker on the left is lagging behind its peers in total score as it does in frame rates, starting with the 2950X or second gen 16 core thread ripper machine. It's down and off of it about 10%. Another 15% better, and you're up at the latest 3970X, the $2,000 thread ripper king of the hill for now. To its right is the 3960X, that's the baby brother thread ripper with 24 cores, 48 threads. To the right is the 3950X 16 core <coughs> consumer processor. And to the right is the Intel King of the Hill high end desktop, which is really just a rebranded 9980XE with an extra 100 megahertz clock boost. Except for now, instead of 2000 they charge 1000 for it, which dramatically affects this cost per point scoring. What you see is a mapping of the price per benchmark score. So for every two points in the 4K test, I spent $1 with the Threadsmoker machine, whereas if you bought the newest 3970X, you would see about 0.62. So I'm definitely winning the value proposition at this point. Unfortunately, I did not pay the going rate for a 1950X on Amazon, $550. I spent a thousand on it. However, I have loved it for two years. Notice the bump up to about 1.25 points per dollar with the 3950X. Whew. As you can probably tell by the wardrobe change, that took a couple days to run. The benchmarks show us that there is a premium on the performance that you get with the newest hardware. Probably something we knew, but what was surprising to me is how well the Ryzen 3950X did against, well, chips that cost twice as much. The 3950X is the consumer version of their high-end chips. It has 16 cores, and frankly, at $1,000 right now, I'd wait about four months and see if you could get it for something around 750. That would be an absolutely killer deal. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you like the content. Let me know what scores you get if you run Puget Systems benchmarks down below. I'd love to see what your hardware is and then what you get in benchmark returns and whether or not you plan to upgrade. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe if you haven't already and do me a favor, throw a like on this. It'll give other people a chance to find the content. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.